Hello Zoom Head Reaction, this time we're going back in with Radiohead. Now, if you are new to my channel, hello, if this is the first Radiohead video you're seeing, I've reacted to the others, we are going in order. We've done Rainbows, we've done AK Computer, and we've done Kit A. Now, apparently this one, which I really should have looked up how to bloody say the name, I think it's just Amnesiac, Amne Amnesiac, possibly. <laughs> Why do I always do this? I always forget to look it up, and it is what it is now. Apparently this one is a bit like Kit A, and could be classed as like a B-side, because it was recorded by their on tour, so interesting to see, I guess, how it's going to sound knowing that they're touring and recording at the same time. A lot of artists do that, obviously. The following cast of this and my other videos are on Patreon. Links are down below if you want to support me. My socials are there. All that jazz. Let's get it cracking. Oh. Mm -mm -mm. As always, as we're going along, let me know what the songs are about or if there's any meanings beyond them. I don't look too much into them. I just like to embrace the sound, the lyrics, and just see where the song takes me. Very keen though to see if this one, I guess, lives up to the hype of what I already think of them and just how incredible they are, really. All right, the first song is Pack It Like Sardines in a Crushed Tin Box. <laughs> Packet missing an E, interesting. I wonder if there is a hidden meaning there. Let's see how they're gonna open up. Let's go. Oh, what year is this? 2001, okay. Because that definitely sounds a bit more techno-y. I guess a bit more experimental. Definitely like a building up song, like it's on a loop pedal or something. opening song I think it's good that I really space out the albums and I haven't listened to them a whole heap obviously because they're actually a lot of music so I don't know if I'm gonna get the reminiscence of it sounding like b-sides to kid a or yeah kid a so I like that fact that I'm kind of going in still fresh and still seeing it as its own piece of work very cool I love like I said almost like the clutter and the industrial sounds and then it kind of stripping back and just having that do, 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 do. very cool yeah, it definitely sounds a lot more experimental, I suppose. And like, I mean, it's not like super out there, but it definitely is a lot weirder than I guess most mainstream stuff. Love his voice. And yeah, I guess just a story you can kind of build with it. Again, I don't know what it's about specifically, but I don't really care about that anymore. I just want to vibe it. Love the lyrics that I love and love the production. Next song's Pyramid Song. Let's go. No. So they all like the murmurs and that. I love that stuff. Yes. Yeah. 
I have on repeat. So drawn out, that slow-mo draining delivery of the monotone voice again. Whoa, Jesus, that went straight in. All right, give me a second. I wonder why it's called Pyramid Song. I would have thought like maybe River Song or something, but maybe that's just, you know, to throw us off. Stunning, it's literally only repeated twice, but just so, so nice. I guess, yeah, it could be an, an aliving song. It could be whatever you interpret it as, but definitely feels like you're leaving this place. And maybe kind of looking back on everything that's happened. I love like the past lovers, like, and the future lovers. So that's very interesting as well. The, the future lovers were there. Maybe the people that you were going to end up with or have interactions with, but didn't. Interesting, love that song. You know me, love a sad song that's just a depressive and makes you feel those things. Absolutely one of the best. Next song's Pulk slash Pull Revolving Doors. <laughs> These weird little pull, pull, push. I don't know what, I don't, yeah, weird, I don't know. Let's see how it's going, let's go. They're all so different as well. How easy it's gonna go. Way more chaotic, which I love. Oh, doors on the runners of big ship. Like <laughs> the lobby to heaven or something we got there and it's just like it's this shit all about doors i love that i'm just picturing yeah heaven everyone's just like going through all these doors and there's this little information box just spouting out this stuff kind of leaves you there with your own thoughts. Love the production. Like I said, almost felt like an interlude. I mean, it's four minutes. They've all been about four or five minutes and they just fly by. They're so interesting, so investing and just very captivating. And you want to listen to what's going to come and you're just almost preempting the coolness of it. Love that. That was sick. All three so different, but I guess they kind of just work because they are all a bit odd and a bit erratic. I'm actually really liking this so far. Definitely a very strong start. I really hope it kind of stays in this trajectory. Next song's You and Who's Army. Let's go. <gasps> It's just a cool way to, I guess, say it within a song. You're his army, the most calm, but then the most built up. So weird, so intriguing. Like I said, I think it's all just going to be a bit weird and a bit intriguing throughout. Love that, and I love that you don't really know what you're going to get at all, which is the most exciting part. Next song's I Might Be Wrong. Let's go. You kind of always get stuck with the last song in your head, just for a bit until you, uh, you know, forget about it. Yeah, the 
vocal delivery throughout the album is just so cool. most of them and you just get so lost and then you're like how did five minutes just go past because you just really fall into a different world love that that was stunning definitely just makes you feel you just mm, yeah it's I, I if you love it you know what i'm talking about you're just like oh it's so good love it definitely gave you that soundtrack element which of course they're very good at anyway production is absolutely killer and the voice is just there as a comfort you kind of when you hear it, you're like oh that's right like that's what you kind of latch on to but it's really the production that just takes you on the journey number six here program is the best song on the album it's my dad's called knives out let's go sing every song you like what Maybe that's a metaphor. But some brutal lyrics in there, like they would have drowned you at birth if you were a dog. Full on. Love that though. Again, that drawn out like of the voice. So nice. It's very hard to imagine that we're at six songs because of the journey you've been on. I don't know, what's that like? Third, 25 minutes. It feels like a lifetime and it feels like it's just gone by like that. It's just so cool. You want to go back with every single song. This is an album you absolutely just want to have on repeat. It's going to be when you're feeling down and you just want his voice to comfort you with that drawn out agony kind of vibe. And what I was saying before with it now, like this song's stuck in your head, but as soon as the next song kicks in, you kind of get into it. You forget about the previous song and then that one's stuck in your head, which I really like. Next song is called Morning Bell Slash Amnesia. <laughs> I think the title track, this probably should encompass everything the album has to offer us. Let's go. <laughs> Interesting. I love a good self-reference. That's 
kind of hoping that's Sandy Apple's name. <laughs> so I don't know how to say it. Morning Bell and Kid A, I guess it makes sense that it's here as well, knowing that you know they recorded them so close together. I wonder what that is about with the album's name being in that song. But definitely some similar lyrics, if not the same, which is what jogged my memory. Which I love as well, because like I said, they're not albums I've gone and listened to a million times just because I literally don't have the time, but that song stuck out to me from Kid A, so just hearing that like triggered the memory. So I love that even though I've only heard that song a couple of times, it's still was quite prominent just from hearing the bit in this song, if that makes sense. Love, jury, drawn out, the best stuff. They're just, it's such an easy flow through. Probably not the strongest, I'd say, but still just so nice to listen to. And I love the self-reference to Kid A's album. Next song's Dollars and Cents. Let's go. It's a bit more jazzy, maybe. Okay, let's talk about better things. Like we can just put on our rose colored glasses and just forget about all of this stuff and just live our lives and fall into it and just, you know, repeat those behaviors. And I guess don't think too deeply. We're very cool. We're very cool. We're very cool humans. We're very clever at thinking so deep and then not thinking at all. I love something like that and almost the conversation like we're going to do this. It's like, can't you be quiet? Just kind of muffling it, which is what obviously, you know, people in power want. They want that stuff to be muffled and they don't want people thinking too much. But obviously they encourage that and to be free spirited and be an individual, but in reality, that's not the truth. Perfect production, engulfing, just draining, and almost like those realizational moments within it. And yeah, I really like that. That was sick. Next song's Hunting Bears. Let's go. All no lyrics. Very cool album. and again very captivating to listen to. I wonder why it's called Hunting Bears. Obviously, like I said, as always, let me know the information as the songs go on or just, you know, whatever you know about each song or your favorite song, etc, etc. The next song, Like Spinning Plates. Let's go. <laughs> just the way their mind thinks to come up with this stuff. Like, rewinding or like skipping through. Like spinning, I guess, you yeah, like spinning plates. And then you like, you crave his voice because you haven't had it for a few minutes now. Especially on the last song, you just like want to hear him sing. Sounds like it's been sung in reverse. Cinematic 
production is just so good. Such a TV moment, a climatic moment in a TV show. Honestly, a lot of these songs that they do is ju are just so good. Oh my god, like spinning plates, what a weird ass one. I wrote the last song, which is insane how quickly it's flown by, considering how much is put into these songs in terms of just the feel, the vibe, the essence, the soul of them. Last song's called Life in a Glass House. Let's wrap it up, let's go. <sighs> like I said, the song, the song just before, you just, you're so engulfed in it, you want to stay there, and then, but you want to go more, you want to, you know, see what else there is. Just when you think each song can't get better than the one before, you're like, nah, this is, you know, not gonna live up to it. It does. 11 back-to-back -back bangs, not a single skip, to be honest. I would not skip any of these songs. You wanna go in with them, you wanna fall in love with them. They're so draining, so agonizing, but so addictive and just so, so nice to listen to. Like Spinning Plates, it got me just, oh my God, one of the best. Pyramid Song, one of the best. I might be wrong, one of the best. Dollars and Cents, I love. I mean, to be fair, the only song, maybe the weakest, would be Hunting Bears, per se, just because it's just, you know, production. And I guess you don't get the feels of his voice and you really miss that sound that he really gives you. But then when it kicks back in, in like Spinning Plates, I guess it has a bit more of an impact too. Stunning, stunning, such a, I guess, album about Capitalism, commercialism, how we just ruin people, ruin each other, ruin the planet, all that jazz, but it's coded in such an addictive little essence. I mean, that jazz kind of sprinkled throughout and then to close there at this speakeasy, like it's some big closing number I love. Every song's so different, but once it's ended, you're like, it just actually all worked so perfectly. The fact that an album can fly through when it's 44 minutes and each song's about four to five minutes is just, I mean, it says it all, it says how good it is. Incredible, incredible, incredible. I think it might be one of my favorites by them so far. Definitely the most, well, definitely the most cohesive, but not, if that makes sense. Bearing in mind, it's been months and months since I listened to some of the others, but I think for me now, this would be one of my favorite albums by them, and I can't even say the name properly. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Let me know everything. Let me know your favorite song. What do you think of this album? Like when it came out, what was, I guess, the reception, considering they've just released one? I don't know. I didn't feel like a B-side album, but maybe that's just because I haven't heard Kid A in a while. As always, let me know down below. Following cuts are on Patreon. All my links are down below. You can go find the other Radiohead videos or any other ones if you want. Other than that,